Hey, my name is Amy and welcome to my channel, a place where I combine both my passion for music and for writing. In today's video, we come back to the world of music. I had a request to make this video a little while ago, so I'm glad I'm finally able to make it. I'm going to cover something that musicians do almost every single day, and that is practice. I'm going to share some ideas on how to practice efficiently, memorizing, maintaining repertoire, and other little tips I have for music practice. But don't worry if you don't play a musical instrument. The ideas and topics that I cover in this video can be applied to the development and learning of any skill. So let's talk about practicing. I wanted to cover how you could practice the most efficient way you can. Life is super busy, and if you're not in school anymore, there's so many other things like a job or just other life things that can take you away and not give you as much time to practice. I miss being able to practice all day long and just having that kind of schedule and routine of learning things and lessons, but I also don't miss those tiny like little cubicles in the ground or in the basement, I mean, and just they were really sad. So there's pros and cons. But before we can talk about practicing efficiently, we have to know a few things about the brain and how we learn. And this can be applied to not just music, but just anything in general. The nerves that carry the information from our brain to our limbs or just everywhere in our body are called axons. Myelin is a layer or really a sheath that insulates the axons, which helps prevent energy loss. When we do a repetitive action, it creates layers of myelin, which makes the electrons move faster and eventually makes a supercharged highway of information. So it's really important we repeat something correctly, otherwise we have to build new layers, which takes more time. To get quality and effective practice, we have to be super focused and work on specific sections in a piece not just the piece in general. Specific things can be a technical issue or just a musical idea or just anything that you're having trouble with in a certain piece or just a little snippet of a piece. It's important to remove distractions like your phone or your computer or just put them on airplane or do not disturb mode. One thing I tell my students all the time is that if you can't play something slow, you definitely won't be able to play it fast. So slow practice is super key. I get it, I find it hard myself sometimes to do it slowly, it's just kind of boring and a little tedious, but it's super effective and you can slowly increase the speed of doing something, just not all at once. Breaking up your practice in little time chunks or little sections is really helpful in practicing efficiently. I've covered this a little bit already in my collab video with my friend Ron, so I'll have a link to that video in the description below. Again, if you don't have very much time or you just can't practice your instrument because it's super early or super late at night, mental practice is actually a huge part of practicing. You can reinforce physical motions during mental practice. There's a few things you can do for mental practice and I won't cover them all here, but I wanted to share a few things that's really helped me. I like to take the score of my music and follow along while listening to a recording. It's also a really good idea to have your score and actually sing your part in your head. This way you can kind of plan out the way you want to phrase yourself and not just what the recording did and you can kind of see things that you want to work on maybe your next time practice. I like putting my music on my iPad, then I can kind of notate on it without worrying about making my part too messy. It's also a really good idea to know what key signatures you're in certain areas, or just what chords, or if there's any reoccurring themes or motives that happen throughout the piece, you can kind of analyze that and notate that in your music, or just anything you want to be aware of. Often when I was traveling to a rehearsal, I couldn't obviously practice my instrument, so I'd look at the music and kind of find the sections that I'd want to look at when I got to the rehearsal. I also could practice what fingering I wanted to do and write that in as well. So it's really important to have the clear of knowing exactly what you wanted to do in your head before actually picking up your instrument. Because if you don't have it mapped out on your head, there's no way it's going to come out on your instrument. Another helpful thing for practicing efficiently is remembering this quote. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practicing perfectly makes perfect. Mark Fewer said this at Demand Forge a few years ago and it really stuck with me. I know perfect sounds impossible, but I do believe it's really important to always strive to play as best as you can. Patience, persistence, and consistency is huge in music practice, especially if you want to become a better musician. Consistency is so important because if you only do something once a month, it's going to take you forever to really master this one skill. You have to strive for perfection every time you pick up your instrument. You can't just become complacent, but you have to be super picky, and I know that's exhausting, but that's why you break your practice up into sections so you can really focus at a certain time and then give your brain a little break. Something I've been recently doing is dividing the sections in my piece and numbering them. This way, when I plan out my practice, I can say, oh, I want to do number two and number four of the Bach I'm playing, or one and three of the concerto, and so on and so on. And this helps me practice efficiently, where I just don't play through my piece and kind of bash through it and be like, well, 
guess I'm done practicing, but this way I can really focus on the areas that I want to and I'm having trouble with. As I just said, I like to zoom in on certain sections that I'm having trouble with. It could be as little as three notes. Until I can play those correctly or the way that I want to, I keep repeating them. Then eventually I kind of zoom out and put that section into context and then bigger context and then bigger context. This way I can play it through without having to stop at that certain section. Another thing I learned at Demand for in regards to practicing is if you're having trouble with a certain section, you have to be able to repeat it seven times in a row before you can move on to something else. And the way it works is if you repeat it five times and you mess up on the sixth time, you have to go all the way back to zero and start over again until you play it seven times perfectly. It makes you really focused so you don't have to keep repeating the section over and over again. When should you memorize a piece? Sometimes I don't even realize I've memorized a piece until I just don't have my music and I try to play it and I surprise myself by how far I can go without the music. And this is just a natural result of repetition. Depending on your timeline, if you have to perform this piece for a concert or recital, you obviously have to memorize it before then. I don't know if there's a certain timeline that you have to follow to memorize it, but you have to make sure that you learn it properly first before you memorize it. Memorizing a piece is a really good idea as it helps you focus on the musical aspect of your playing and so you just don't get stuck on the music on the music stand. It's so easy just to get glued and just not think about anything that's coming on your instrument but just the notes on the page. But how do you memorize? I think everyone's a little different, but for me it's repetition, repetition, and repetition. Mental practice is also a really good idea. If you can't sing it in your head from top to bottom, then you don't have it memorized. I also like to listen to recordings, so I'm really familiar with the piece I'm playing. Some people say not to listen to too many recordings when you're learning a piece, as this could influence how you interpret a piece by the interpretation of the people on the recording. I find it really helpful listening to a wide variety of different recordings of the same piece. This way you're exposed to different interpretations, and you can choose kind of what you like and what you don't don't like of certain interpretations or recordings. Another good idea is to record yourself when you're playing by memory. This way you can kind of listen back and see the areas kind of faltered in or just wasn't as strong in the memory. And then you can work on those certain sections with the music. What I used to do in my undergrad that was really effective when I was learning a big piece or a fugue for example is I would number certain sections. Then when I would go to practice I would make myself pick from any number and whatever number I picked I would have to be able to start at that section without the music. If I couldn't do that that meant I had to work more on the memory of that section. This just ensured that I had the whole thing just memorized inside and out. It takes time to do this sort of memorization but it's really effective. Needed some more coffee. In order to put a piece into maintenance mode, we have to ask and answer a few questions. Is the piece easy to play? Are you able to get through the piece correctly several times? If so, you can now put it into your maintenance pile. If you still find yourself kind of scrambling to get through the piece and kind of holding on for dear life, maybe it's a good idea to keep it in your learning pile. I usually have three piles, to learn, learning, and maintenance, or just have learned and want to keep it in my fingers. Once I've moved a piece to the maintenance pile, for me, I want to play it at least once a week to keep it in my fingers. And that once a week time when I do pick it up, I like to focus on the areas that I typically had trouble with and just play through it too. It really depends on how long you've been learning this piece and how many years you've been playing the piece for how quickly or how much it stays in your fingers. Some newer pieces, you might have to kind of play a little more frequently to keep it in your fingers or keep it fresh in your memory. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a complete break from a piece, especially if you're feeling dull or uninspired by it. This way you can come back to it with a fresh mindset and often is a little easier when you come back to it as well. Okay, now a few tips for music practice. I believe it's really important to play something at least once a day that makes you really happy and that you enjoy playing. It can be really discouraging when you're working on pieces that you can't really play yet and that just are really hard and that you just don't sound good yet. It's just important to remember that you love your instrument and that you love playing and that you actually can play it. Not so much right now due to COVID, but when I used to travel around from gig to gig, I would get exhausted and not all the concerts were the most inspiring experiences. I would find myself kind of getting into this rut and downroll spiral of just kind of not feeling happy when I play the violin and not enjoying it and just forgetting how much I love the violin. Now having a little bit more time than I used to, I get to play pieces that I just haven't learned in years or have always wanted to learn and I actually have time to practice. When I was working so much, I often would just be practicing the things for the concerts, not really to spend time on pieces that were not for work. Again, through COVID, I really had to face kind of the reality of not being able to perform in the next future and just realizing this is an opportunity to work on things maybe I wouldn't have the time otherwise. I still would much rather be performing, but now I have this time and I want to use it the most I can. So when concerts do come back and, and auditions as well, I'm ready.
I would highly recommend recording yourself at least once a week. There's so many things that you miss just in the moment when you're playing and recording is awful sometimes, but it's just a really good idea to listen and then you can write down the things that you had trouble with and then you can focus on those areas. I often reserve a space in my weekly spread for my practice journal, a space to put down when I record myself, like notes or just measure numbers and then I can go back when I go to that certain section and see what I need to work on for the next time. Ah, the metronome, the annoying but very useful tool for practicing. My teacher as a kid used to have this metronome that he like counted out loud and it used to really scare me. However, I have gotten over my fear of the metronome and I use it almost on a daily base. Having this external box that gives you the beat without being influenced by your own kind of tempo is really useful. Especially if there's a tricky rhythm that you just have a hard time counting, it's nice to have that kind of steady beat going that you can latch onto. Also, it's obviously really helpful in helping you keep a steady beat, which is very important for excerpts, or just if you're playing with other people. Nobody likes to play with somebody who rushes. So I use a metronome at the very beginning stages of learning a piece. We obviously can't perform with a metronome, so in the later stages of learning a piece, I don't use the metronome all the time. This way I can incorporate things in the piece that you can't really do with a metronome like Excels or Richardandos or some rubato as well. I do check in occasionally just to make sure that my tempo hasn't gone too crazy. I often put my metronome at half the performing tempo. For example, if the performing tempo is 120, I practice it at 60. This way when I practice slowly, there's still some relation to the performance tempo, but when I'm playing slowly, I can really focus on what I'm doing and what sound and what's coming out of my instrument. A fun metronome game you can do is do a certain section or the whole piece if you really want to at a slow tempo. When you can play it at that tempo all the way through without stopping or messing up, you can put it up two notches or even just a couple clicks in your metronome. Then you play it through again and if you successfully get through it that time as well, you get to go faster. However, if you make a mistake, you have to go down two clicks and the goal eventually is to get to performance tempo. This way it makes slow practice and repetition a little bit more fun and you can feel your progress from the slow tempo to the fast tempo. And lastly, plan your practice. This way you can have specific things to work on in your practice session. It's so easy just to pick up your instrument and kind of play through and just not really be focused on anything and you just kind of wasted that time. Though I'm not saying you can't just play through a piece, but if that's all you do, you're kind of wasting your time and you're probably not gonna improve any or very slowly. I use my bullet journal to kind of plan out my practice session and kind of what I want to specifically work on and like what times I want to do it. Like if I want to do 10 minutes on a certain thing or 20 minutes on another thing, this way it's all planned out. In my video for bullet journaling for musicians, I go into a little more detail of how I set up my bullet journal and feel free to check it out. I'll have the link in the description below. If you'd like me to do an updated music bullet journaling video, please let me know in a comment. Practicing can often be overwhelming and sometimes discouraging. If we come to our practice with a plan, it helps organize us and keeps us focused. Taking breaks throughout your practice or just breaking your practice up into multiple times per day will help keep you fresh and not just kind of turn into just playing without really listening. I often go for a run or do some strength training as a break. This helps get my body moving and just as a mental break too. While working hard to perfectly practice is super important, it's also a good idea to play things for fun and that you enjoy doing. How has your practice been recently? Do you have any tips for music practice? If so, so please share them in a comment. I know there's so many more things I could have covered in this video, but maybe one day I'll do a part two. So if you don't want to miss that video, click the subscribe and the bell icon. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button as well. Leave me a comment in the comment section as that really helps out my channel when you do. Happy practicing and I'll see you next time.